iconic empires. And today I've got a wonderful woman to, with me who I'm on the other side of the interview. So Edwina Murphy Drumer has an incredible career, an incredible family life, and is really an example of someone who takes leaps of faith to create her life the way that she plans. Now that all sounds fabulous, but we're going to also show the reality of what life is like. And Edwin is gonna walk you through a few of her stories of how she's taken leaps of faith in her life and career and also in her business. So first of all, welcome Edwina. Thank you so much for having me, Janine. So good to have you here. And we have connected uh, for quite some time as I said, I was being interviewed by you on one of your amazing shows that you do. And really tell us about what your, your company does for women right at the moment. And also I want to hear a little bit about your family life as well. Well, um, maybe, if I, maybe if I start a few steps back with those leaps of courage and how things have evolved for me. So when I had four children, eight and under, I actually found myself as a sole care single mum. And we were living on a farm a little bit out of um, Castlemaine, Bendigo, for the, for the Aussies in your audience. And um, I was left with um, packing up that farm and selling it and, you know, wondering what on earth I was going to do. And my youngest was five months old, so they were, they were little. And I moved down to the Geelong area and ended up buying a flower farm, which, you know, it, to look at it from the outside, <laughs> trying to manage four kids is a little bit like a zoo in itself. But what I wanted to do was create um, the opportunity for me to create an income and not have to leave home and put my kids in daycare and stuff. So I, that's what I did. So I had a flower farm and it was kind of crazy, but it was also, you know, there was also a lot of magic and fun in that because being surrounded by fresh flowers is a, a pretty nice way to live. And so I, I raised my kids um, and they, you know, spent a lot of time barefoot and fairly feral, <laughs> running around on the farm, building fairy houses while I harvested and sold flowers. And I ended up doing, you know, hotels and weddings and funerals and flowers for concerts and all sorts of amazing things. I had little roadside stands around the place where people could just drive past and, and buy flowers. Prior to that, I had done naturopathy. And so I had this, this burning passion to continue doing something with that. So as my kids got a little bit older and I had a little bit more time, I decided to do more study and I did functional nutrition, always thinking that I was going to create a business out of my passion for using food as medicine. But I'd always just felt like this kind of something I loved, but it just never worked. I couldn't find a way to really, I didn't want to sit in clinic I'm not the sort of person that wants to sit and have people come and see me one-on-one -on -one in a clinic setting it just didn't light me up anyway along this this journey and there's there's a lot to it but I don't want to dive into too much detail for the sake of people trying to uh, get the, the nuggets out of my story I came across an amazing um, coach that we share Shanda Sumpna and so it was the first time that I really looked at the idea of having a coach, I'd always had this strongly held belief that it was up to me. It was a hundred percent, you know, like I had to do it all by myself. And if I didn't, I was a failure. And, you know, like I consumed, I don't know how many courses and spent vast amounts of money that I couldn't afford on one course after another, after another, that just didn't have that support of a coach. So that was the piece that really started to make a difference. And that way was where A League of Extraordinary Mothers was born. So that's my online show that's had about 8,000 women go through it to this day. And next year, we're just going to grow that even bigger. But that's really where I started to find my groove or, you know, that that. Um, work that really lit me up in working with mums to create a really exciting vision for their life and then providing the support and accountability to bring it to life. And 
you know, we, we hear about what is your purpose and, you know, finding that purpose. And it always sounded a bit like, mm, and I thought it was food and I thought it was, you know, these various different things along the way. But when I actually moved into doing this work, then I knew that I'd found, you know, because like now I've got to pull myself away from work. I, you know, <laughs> there's no, there's no chore in working. It actually is what I do for fun as well as now making money with it. So it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> and what you do is amazing because I think, you know, we all have a journey in life and especially when we become mothers, uh, I'm sure you would probably agree. We, we tend to lose a lot of our identity. Yep. And we tend to put things on the back burner that we had desires for before and we become someone different. So it's often harder to tune into what it is we actually want, what we're here for. So can you tell us a little bit about that, about how either that's happened for, for you or how you've helped some women do that for themselves? I think the way that it happened for me was was um, a little bit, little chunks of accident, actually. And so now I get to do this for women in a much more deliberate way. One thing that happened was that I met a gorgeous man and remarried about five years ago. And that opened up a little bit of space in my life. But, you know, I remember when we first met and he said to me, you know, like, what do you do for fun? And I was quite literally clueless. I, you know, like fun for me was um, getting to go to the toilet all by myself, having a shower by myself, a full night's sleep, <laughs> like, like the things that most mums, you know, look forward to. Um, having, having time to just stop was about as much fun as I could think of at that time. So, um, you know, finding, having you, making space to really dig into and do some exploring become curious about the things that, that light you up and sometimes we can we can dig back to pre-motherhood you know like maybe it was learning a musical instrument or maybe it was horse riding or you know, like maybe it was just simply spending time in nature for some of us it's shopping you know like let go of the idea that there's a right or a wrong it's just what's right for you but you know we can flesh that out a lot more and look into relationships and the home that we live in and the career that we have and you know there's lots and lots of elements that we dive into and we create a full vision for somebody's life but it's so infrequent that we would actually step back and give ourselves the luxury of dreaming and pursuing the possibility that those dreams can come true. That is so true. You know, I hear from women a lot where, you know, whether it's friends at uh, mothers at school or girlfriends and, you know, when I ask them a question like, Oh, so what are you, what would you really love to create? Because we're big vision thinkers. They're like, Oh, um, I'm not sure. And, and it's something that they literally haven't spent time yeah. or created space to focus on. And so why then, why is it important that women do that? I think it is incredibly important to feel proud and excited about the life you're living because why else are we here? And I, I talk about this in terms of what are we role modeling for our kids? Because we um, are very, very conditioned to make everybody around us happy and make sure that everybody else around us is okay. And often that comes at the expense of our own dreams, our own vision, our own well-being. Whereas, you know, like what I say to mums is, what are you role modeling for your kids? Is this what you want your kids to do? So if we're looking, um, I've got two boys and two girls. So just for the sake of this example, when I look at my teenage girls that are 16 and 18 now, I don't want them to sacrifice their dreams their um, passion for life, their excitement, that fabulous sense of anticipation that you can have for your life and what's coming just because they have a family or they have kids, you, you can do both. And I actually think that it's really important for our kids that we set the example of what it looks like to live a really rich and full life. Yeah. I had a very interesting text from my mum my last night 
and I had told her that I've just got a role in a musical. And, oh, and she said to me, when do you have time? And that's part of that old conditioning, isn't it? That, yeah. So why can't I go and rehearse two nights a week and every other you know, weekend, like on a Sunday? Yeah. Like it's, it's a, an old conditioning and belief that we still carry around. Yeah. And for me to actually accept that role was a huge personal journey in a short space of time because my first instinct was, oh, what about my children? Yeah. I don't have the time. Just like what my mother texted me about. That was my first instinct. Yeah. However, my husband being the amazing, gorgeous husband he is, he actually said, no, I think you need this for yeah. you. Yeah. And, and I thank him for making me aware of that because I know that it was too easy to say no mm -hmm. and sacrifice my desire again for yeah. what I thought I had to be there for my family. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if we um, take the time to have this conversation, and obviously, you know, it's age dependent. I'm, I'm not dismissing how intensive motherhood is when your kids are little. But when they get a little bit bigger, you know, I've, I had an experience this year where I chose to do a leadership training in the United States, which had me in traveling four times, um, at, you know, in four months, which was a huge, huge um time commitment and when I first heard about it it was like there's no way I can do it that's just you know that's an impossibility and of course once that plant seed is planted I just um, you know it just stayed there and the conversation kept coming up and my kids actually said to me mum you've got to do this it's really important to you and so they were completely behind me and rallied together um, to you know help me make that decision so I think if we if we make it a, a decision it's not it's not so much asking our kids for permission but we can make it a conversation and don't just po possibly presume that your kids would hate it and would fall apart if you were gone it, I think it's probably a gift to them to give that you know when they're when it's age appropriate to give them that independence and my husband was here their stepdad and they stepped up, they did cooking, they, you know, like the stuff that they can manage to do when I'm not here <laughs> is amazing. And so it's, it is a gift to them to give them that taste of, you know, like what they actually can do when mum's not there to pick up all the crumbs behind them. My youngest son, uh, well, I've only got two uh, children, a girl and a boy, but my um, son is nearly seven years old and I still find myself putting his shoes on for him. He goes to school. And, you know, it's, it's those kind of things that he can definitely put his own shoes on. Yeah. Uh, it's that internal thermometer for us as mothers, isn't there? That, yeah. I, I, would you say it's martyrdom that we go into? Yeah. I think it's, I think there's a sense of um, wanting to prove that we're doing a good job that's a, i mean that's a, an explosive thing to say because of course we want to feel really proud of the job we're doing as mothers and i remember reading the gorgeous jackie onassis say um if you bungle raising your children nothing else you do matters very much i mean no pressure but, <laughs> but you know i think I think fundamentally, you know, like we're, we're doing a great job and we get to trust ourselves rather than looking for external validation, but trust ourselves. And, you know, society sets us up to be consciously, constantly comparing ourselves to everybody else. Well, so-and-so's child does five after-school activities and speaks three languages. And it's like, that's awesome. If that suits their family, if that's what they're choosing to do, great. That doesn't work for me. There's, there is no way that I'm going to be the mother that does five after school activities. And you know, like the, the, it just doesn't work for me and for our family. They have lots of opportunities. And um, so the comparison thing, I think, is the biggest killer for most mums. Have a, have a vision of what you want for your family. What is right for you and for your family? It doesn't have to be what's right for everybody else. And the word that you used, which is really resonating, is that word trust. Mm. And can you speak a little into how, how you can actually show women how to trust themselves and how to trust that their desires and vision for their life is actually worthy and, 
you know, because we have been so conditioned. How can you do that with women to show them the path for that trust? It, it really, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer, but I think it, you know, it's very dependent on the story that we have running in our head. And it's that worthiness story. And I know when, when I left school, I had almost no self-worth. I was, I believed I was dumb. I was ugly. I had very few friends. I didn't belong. I didn't fit in. I wasn't sporty. I wasn't musical. I, you know, there was just a long list of not good enough. And I, I hated the skin I was in. I didn't like looking in the mirror. I didn't, you know, feel that I was had any vision for my life that I was going to be something fantastic or someone fantastic. And so I went on a path of drinking heavily and I ended up working in hospitality in the dark. <laughs> so it was, it was a really, I mean, it, there was lots of fun in there, but it was a very toxic lifestyle. And it wasn't until I got to the point where I was so unwell that I went to see a naturopath who with for for my experience she was the first person that i felt really saw me heard me cared you know for anybody that's been to see a naturopath as opposed to going to a doctor where it's like a 10 minute visit it's like you know like let's whack a band-aid on whatever's going wrong a naturopath will sit with you for an hour and listen and it's you know if you find the right person it's that sense of okay my life matters and so that was a really pivotal um, point in my life where I started to turn things around. And I started to see that I could make something of myself that felt significant and that then I could go on and become that woman for other people and to start giving that gift of time, attention, love and care to other women. And we, it is it is simply a matter of that that allows us to blossom and see what's possible for ourselves and so i think if we can step back and apply that same um philosophy to our kids you know it's not the five thousand um extra cur curricular activities and the cost of the school they're going to and all those things that really in my opinion makes the difference it's them feeling seen heard good enough, loved. And, you know, there, there's, um, obviously I'm, I'm getting worked up. I can talk and talk about this stuff, but I, you know, there's been times with my girls when they've worn, you know, teenage girls will wear stuff and you kind of go, Oh babe, put some more clothes on. You know? But it's not a judgment. It's, it's so important that with, other women and with our kids that we go, you're freaking perfect. You are beautiful exactly as you are. If you don't feel amazing, let's look at that and see how we can support you to feel amazing. Does that help? <laughs> it really does. And all of those words that you've spoken go back to a point that you made earlier in our conversation about having a, a coach or a mentor. Yeah. And so, yeah. Why was that really important for you? Can you can you share with us like some of the uncoverings that happened for you? It's that seeing in you what is possible before you can see it yourself. And that probably sounds like a bit of a bumper sticker. <laughs> but it, the fact is that in having a coach, and I've now worked with many coaches, um, that, you know, they they see what's possible. And it's only the stories in our heads, that broken record of, who am I to, or, you know, like I'm not looking good enough to show up on video today or whatever rubbish story is going on in our heads, having a coach, having somebody that is just invested in bringing out the best in you and who sees that possibility in you before you see it yourself is invaluable. It is invaluable to have, you know, like, two years ago or a bit more, if somebody had have said to me, you're going to have an online show with thousands of women doing this, I would have been like, yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't think so. And now this, you know, in this short amount of time, this has happened and it wouldn't have happened if I was trying to do it myself because those broken records, those stories of not enough, not good enough in my head probably would have stopped me. 
So that's the, you know, that is the power of having somebody else. And, you know, if you think about any time in your life when things have really taken off, I mean, we, none of us would have gotten through school without teachers for support and accountability, or, you know, we never would have improved in music or sport or whatever, wherever we have a mentor or a coach or a teacher that sees the possibility in us before we see it ourselves that is when we really can grow and excel. So we some, for some reason, we have come to the idea that, you know, like once you leave school or you leave university or are no longer training to be an athlete or whatever, then we no longer need anybody. We get to do it all by ourselves. And that's where it all goes wrong. That's where it all goes wrong. Uh, and, you know, I'm speaking from experience. You know, I went a long time as an entrepreneur without a mentor or without a coach and it was hard work like yeah. I was battling my own demons yeah. constantly in my head and it wasn't until I took that forward step to have a coach and mentor that it actually really helped and of course this is what you do specifically it's what you do for mothers so I'd love you to give us an example of, of say someone you've worked with who you've helped move through to create her own life with her own desires yeah, I I not long ago wound up um, working with a woman who I've been working with all year and she stumbled across one of my um, vision board classes quite by accident. And I remember when we first started, she was horrified to even get on a call like this on Zoom. She was hiding. She didn't want to be seen. She had... Um, very tragically lost two husbands um, to they had both died um, about eight years ago and she'd really got in a very depressive hole she was barely leaving home let alone the suburb where she lived and she had be, had been a very successful businesswoman but she just shut her life down and become very depressed and through um, create, she also put on about 50 extra kilos. And through doing uh, working with me, we just we created this magical vision for her life. And just with a whole lot of love and support and accountability, and you know, being in this um, space where we could connect every couple of weeks, step by step by step, she has slowly started to come back to life and she's really just blossomed. She's, she started a book club. She's going to line dancing. She's, you know, she's um, created a phenomenal charity. She's done huge things. You know, that, that charity where um, women fill up handbags with um, things for women that are homeless. Mm -hmm. She has just done, I think her last workshop that she did was over a hundred, a hundred and something handbags. So, and you know, that's bringing people into her home. She's reconnected with family members that she had um, distanced herself from. And there are just so many Oh, and she's going to New Zealand. So there's just so many layers to her life. Her relationships have improved her quality of life. She lost about 20 something kilos. And, you know, there has just been so many things that, and she's, she feels like she's got her life back. It's amazing. Mm. And nothing could get better than that, than yeah. feeling like you have your life back. That's yeah. incredible, Edwina. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just enormously rewarding work. It's so, so good. Mm. So, which leads me to ask you the question, as part of our Fearless Feminine Founder series, each of our amazing guests are actually giving away a gift. And yours is pretty hot, I have to say. <laughs> so could you just tell us a little bit about what you're giving away, which is like beyond crazy, like it's very generous. Well, I, you know, being that this interview is going out in January and everyone will have just made their, you know, New Year's resolutions, which we love New Year's resolutions. Most of them last at least two weeks. <laughs> I thought it would be a great offer if um, I could um, offer your audience a 30 minute vision building session. And within that, we can look at starting to um, uncover what your vision would be. So it is that priceless, gift of time where you get to shut the door on all the um, 
external things that stop you from gifting yourself this time. So my gift is um, a half an hour vision building session. And so you're going to get booked out very quickly. So make yeah. sure if you're listening to this, you go and jump on the link and go book in. So let's then move over to, for you, where is your company going? Like what's your vision for your life and your company? Well, next year um, we're launching an actual website, A League of Extraordinary Mothers. Up until now, it's just been this kind of drip feed of, of interviews, but we're just expanding it. It's just getting bigger and bigger. And my vision is to create an absolute you know, like a community of many, many more thousands of mothers that get to feel like they have a really safe, um, inspiring, empowering space to come where their story, their vision gets seen and heard and they get the support and accountability to bring that vision to life. It's so exciting. We've been speaking about that vision of yours and it's absolutely coming to fruition. So really excited to, to watch the journey and be alongside with you. To close out our interview, Edwina, I'd really love you to, to go back into some really tangible, uh, I guess, tips that you can give mothers on how to create that vision for their life. Because we really want to ground this for women that each and every one of you is available for this. It, it's, you can do this. So what's some takeaways you can give for our listeners? I think the number one place to focus is on who we get to be in the world. It's very easy when we think about vision as being all the do and the have stuff. So it's, it's the car the car and the house and the you know the fabulous wardrobe and the and the job that we love and all those things but what we really need to focus on first and foremost is who we get to be and there is um, a way of doing this that we can start to peel back all the messages and all the layers of beliefs that we've accumulated throughout our lives that have I talk about people shooting all over you <laughs> We kind of we we get we get this we get this messaging constantly from the people around us about who we should be in the world and how we should show up and what we're capable of. So many of us, having just recently been to my thirty years school reunion, this was really evident that so many of us are still carrying thirty years on or more messaging that we received in school about who we are in the world and who we get to be and it's just crazy it's just crazy so what we can do is provide a beautiful space where we get to step back and look at who we get to be in the world and there's lots of magical ways that we can do that but it starts with looking at people that we strongly admire and look up to. They may be people that we know or people we don't know, but what is it about them that you find so um, attractive, so appealing, so engaging? Is it their authenticity? Is it their generosity? Is it their playfulness? Is it their courage? Is it their compassion? What is it that you so admire? And then we look at how you get to become that person in your life and that is the first step and then we look at the do and the have which is kind of fun too <laughs> i love that and you know it really does come down to being that person and embodying that person isn't it yeah. so that there's that alignment to literally living that life that you desire and create because i think going back to the start of our conversation once we become a mother, there becomes an identity disconnect yeah. to who we were being before, then we become yeah. something that we're not really sure what we are. And so it's yeah. realigning, isn't it, to that yeah. vision of who we can be. Yeah. I love to talk about, you know, our life story in chapters. So at any point in time, you can actually turn the page on a brand new chapter. It's like that fabulous blank canvas and you can start to make it uh, you know like design it like a blueprint for your life and what you want it to look like and it gets to be really fun <laughs> it's fun 
and sometimes can take a leap of faith, can't it, as well? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> like buying a flower farm with four children. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you're a, a bold, brave woman who has such a beautiful heart of gold, Edwina. And, you know, I, I think our listeners can see or hear from you that it's such a place of genuine service. And I think it's such an honour to hear you today and to hear how you speak about your life and, and actually helping other mothers create it for theirs and especially how it's reflected to their children. Because I can imagine the ripple effect of what you're having in the world, Edwina, mm. is incredible and will be for years and years and years to come. And of course, then you're actually helping other mothers do that for themselves. So it's extremely powerful and I want to honour you for that, for the work you do. Thank you so much. So any last words that you'd love to give our listeners today? You're enough. Right now, you're enough. It's not, it's not the next course or the next outfit or the loss of five or 10 kilos or whatever that arbitrary thing is in the future that you believe is going to make you feel like you're enough. You don't need to wait. You are enough right now. Well, with that, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And Edwina, thank you so much for your time. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me.